Hello, welcome to another beautiful Sunday. My name is Tony Abba. Today is the second Sunday of Lent and a day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. Today, Reverend Father Solomon Uko is reminding us that the future glory will be greater than the former. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight met pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, dear child of God, for finding time to join us as we reflect on God's word this morning. Today is a new day. It's a Sunday. It's a day of worship. It's a second Sunday in this holy season of Lent. We give God the glory for his grace, for his mercies, and blessings upon us. We are reflecting on what I have titled the future glory, the future glory. The word of God says in our guy, chapter 2, verse 9, that the glory of the latter shall be greater than the former. Last Sunday was the first Sunday of Advent, and we reflected, was the first Sunday of Lent, and we reflected on what I titled, Tempted by Satan, Tempted by Satan. And there, we differentiated between temptation and test. Temptation comes from the enemy, from the devil and his agents, why the Lord can in any moment decide to test us, like Abraham, our father in faith, was tested by the Lord, and he proved faithful. He passed his test, and the Lord so loved Abraham. Today we can sing and shout Abraham's blessings are mine. So the first reading that we have today is actually from the book of Genesis, and it's about that test that the Lord gave to Abraham, demanding that he sacrifice his only son, Isaac, the child of the covenant. Abraham did not disobey. He went knowing that God, rather than take away, is a God of provision. And in fact, when the Lord saw his faith and his willingness to obey his word, the Lord made a serious promise to Abraham that I want to just read out for us to hear today. The Lord said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only begotten son, I will indeed bless you, and I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, and as the sun which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies, and by your descendants shall all the nations of the earth bless themselves, because you have obeyed my voice, because you have obeyed my voice. Abraham is our father in faith, and is somebody we need as believers, as children of God, to emulate his strong faith and commitment to God. He foresaw the future, knowing that the glory of the latter will be certainly greater than the former. Our gospel reading today is a kind of um, transfiguration story that the Lord took Peter, James, and John and led them on a high mountain by themselves and he was transfigured before them, and his garment became glistingly, intensely white, as no fuller on earth could bleach them. We're reading from Mass Gospel, chapter 9, from verse 2 to verse 10, the story of the transfiguration. We are in the Lenten season, and very soon we'll be getting close to the end of it. The Lord will have to suffer, will have to go through his passion, will have to go through that disgrace so as to redeem humanity. And in fact, he needed the disciples, the apostles who were closest to him to understand that there is something greater than the present. That I am having to go through this, this scandal of the cross does not mean the end. So he needed them to see a glimpse of his glory. That is why we are referring to the future glory. And so he took them up this high mountain so that he can unveil to them, to reveal to them that what they see at the moment, is not all that is. There is something in future that awaits them. So, dear child of God, we got to know that after Good Friday, there is always Easter Sunday. But after the pains we have to go through, 
there is a gain that comes with it. And because without those pain, there will be no crown. And so the Lord wants us to prepare ourselves, knowing that if we mortify the flesh, if we take time to dwell on those basic pillars of the Lenten season, living our lives in intensity in our prayer life and being able to fast, mortifying the flesh, and giving out arms through charity, certainly there are great benefits that comes from these. So there is a glory that awaits God's children that we cannot really understand at the moment. And that was the essence of the incident of the transfiguration on the mountain. And so with this encounter, the Lord wants us to know that there is something greater that is coming our way. There is something that is effective that is coming our way. And as God's children, we should be resolute knowing that the Lamb of God, the Son of the Father, who came so that he can give his life as a ransom for many, has better plans, great plans for God's children. And I pray that, that as we walk these 40 days of Lent, as we make effort to live the life of commitment, of revival, of renewal, of turning new leaves, and making effort to be good and holy, God certainly will bring his glory upon us. I pray for you and your family. I pray for those who are making effort as believers, even in this present situation of the world, with the global pandemic, that God himself will reveal his glory and grant us the grace of sustenance that at the end of it, joy, peace, happiness, gladness will be the portion of his children. May the Lord bless you this day. Continue to grant you your heart desire and fill your mind with the strength that me alone can supply. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Reverend Father Solomon Uko is of the Catholic Archdiocese of Abuja, guiding us in today's reflection. I believe you have learned how to hope and put your trust in God, hoping for a greater glory which is in the future. But if you have questions, or suggestion and you wish to share it with us, please send us a short message on the numbers displayed on your screen or send us an email at ctvnigeria at yahoo.com or better still, post us a comment on our Facebook page. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to get your feedback to know how this program has been blessing you and to also encourage you to put your trust in God. Bye for now and have a fruitful Sunday ahead. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, see now why don't you answer. Somebody's knocking at your door Somebody's knocking at your door Somebody's knocking at your door Oh, sinner Why don't you answer Somebody's knocking Knocks like Jesus. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, knocks like Jesus. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, Jesus calls you. Somebody's knocking at your door. Jesus calls you. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Can't you? Yeah. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, can't you hear him? Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Can't 
you trust him. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, can't you trust him? Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, oh sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody, somebody's knocking. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody. Somebody, somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody, somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody, somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door.